All right, what is good guys? The next day in my training program, legs, uh, I like to start off with squats, barbell squats, or some type of big compound movement, at least for this leg day. And here I'm doing front squats, which is a movement I've like basically have never done before. Um, I just kind of wanted to try them out and to see them. Uh, I only really worked with one 135 here. Um, so very light. This was kind of like the heaviest, maybe I could go comfortably for my wrist. It definitely was a good strain on my wrist because I have to get in that front rack position. So <clears throat> honestly, not a movement that I like would probably rely on anytime in the future. I just wanted to try them out for my first set. Um, maybe I will get into them in the future if I feel like there's use for them when it comes to like growing my legs more. But I kind of just like to stick to standard barbell squats, right? I like to stick to more. I mean, a front squat is kind of like a like a variation of the standard, you know, barbell squat or just bodyweight squat, whatever. But here I move on to back squats and I'm working with more weight because it's a movement I'm more comfortable with. And I am using slant boards here. This allow for me to slide my knees or get my knees further uh, over my toes. So this allows for more quads to be working. And one thing too is, is like when you do squats, you want to kind of get your hips out of it. You know, you're kind of almost good morning, doing a good morning with a weight or something like that. And then becomes more of a back and hip dominant movement. So although like, you know, you might move to so use some of your hips still, Elevating your heels allow for more, I guess, quad focusing, right? So that way, you know, you don't hurt your back or strain your back when you're doing something like a barbell squat. And that way the move is easier even, but of course you're probably gonna have to be working with like lighter weight or something like that. And that way you're kind of doing the move for the sake of, let's say, you know, building muscle. But if you want to like have like a lot of strength in the squat, like you're wanting, like you want to do them like a power lifter would then you know maybe getting your hips into it is probably something that you know you might want to consider but if you just want to simply like get bigger legs then you're going to get bigger legs and then by proxy they're going to get stronger even if you're working in a way that doesn't allow for the best strength gain another thing too is is like your feet placement like how far apart are your legs um you know are your feet closer are your feet farther apart and depending on how close your feet are, how close your feet are, can, I guess, determine like the your depth, so how deep you can get into the squat. And for me, I find that like I kind of have to do like a bit of a wider uh, stance to squat down low enough that's comfortable and doesn't get like my back into the movement. And so therefore, I can just focus more on quads and stuff like that. And I usually always follow up my uh, my squats with some type of hinge movement. Here I'm doing single leg RDLs. I have just one dumbbell in the opposing hand to the balancing leg. Um, you know, this will work your lower back. This will work your hamstrings. And I did feel like an interesting tension. Like I say tension, but I guess like, you know, soreness when it comes to like blood flow and whatnot in my lower back. Uh, maybe because I'm holding the weight on one side and it's kind of like my uh, my core is also doing some work as well. Um, I, I enjoy single leg RDLs and I do them really because like they're really good for your balance. Uh, you want to you want to have good stability, good balance, and you also want to limit imbalances like, you know, having one leg being bigger or stronger than the other, which can limit like your more conventional movements. Um, and, and I say like, you should kind of throw in single leg movements for, you know, both, you know, quads and posterior chain uh, just to help with like making sure you get even things, you even things out. And then, of course, like longevity, you can kind of like equate this to longevity. The, be the better your balance is, the better you're going to do at um, just not falling over, like not dying when, you're, when you get old. Like imagine like you live until like the ripe age of like 150 but you get up from your chair and you trip over, right? Like that, you know, that can be a very fatal fall, right? When maybe, let's say when you're in your 20s, that could have just been like a simple trip, right? So, and then, bro, bro I was watching this video of like these like old, like not old dudes. They're like middle age, probably like dads or something. They were playing basketball and the other dude just fell over like out of nowhere, bro. Like he got crossed up and like he stood still and then he fell over. And it's not like he was like, you know, slow or nothing. He looked like a normal guy. 
So it's just stuff like that too, right? Like the times where you get up and you stumble and trip a little bit, like for no reason at all, like and there was nothing there, like you're literally just tripping on air. That's not a good sign that like you're you know you're well balanced basically, right? You don't just want to build muscle and get fit just to be bigger or whatever, but you also want to cover all your bases in terms of like stuff like simple something as simple as like cardio and whatnot. And again, like I said, cover all your bases so you're not like. You know, you're not like this buff, strong guy, but like, you know, if the wind blows you in a certain direction, you're going to fall over because you can't even stand on your own two feet. Um, what else do I like about this movement? I don't know. Um, I think it's a very interesting movement, single leg RDOs. And you don't have to just do single leg RDOs. Cause you could do something like lunges or step up, stuff like that, which also use like one leg at a time. Here I did sissy squats. Uh, this is like another, I feel like, longevity movement. Um, I'm not working out like all because of longevity. I'm just saying like these movements tend to also just working out in general helps with longevity, but this will also help with your knee health because just looking at how far my knees go over my toes, right? It allows for like a lot more range of motion in my quads. This is this movement is kind of similar to like a leg extension on a machine, um, but with like in with calisthenics here, and. It just because of that full extension, your knee is getting worked in like its fullest range of motion. And so the more range of motion a body part gets, the better it's going to do. Right. The tendons are going to strengthen and stuff like that. Um, sure, you can do squats and you can do squats pretty low. But if you you know want to throw in some type of isolation movement for your quads, you can. And I feel like a sissy squat would be probably the best option because you're getting so much of that movement of that knee movement right and here again i'm doing uh another set of the rdls or single leg rdls uh again like you know you want to make sure i i would just work one leg at a time uh so my left leg i don't have as much balance so i did that first at the beginning of the set and then you know at the second half of the set i do my right leg uh afterwards because i find that my right leg has a lot more balance and one thing too is my left leg being having less balance is also less flexible, right? So my hamstring on my left leg isn't as flexible as my hamstring on my right leg, which I find that to be very interesting. So those are other types of imbalances that can creep up on you if you're not careful and if you're not really trying to figure out like what your own, you know, what your what the weaknesses that you have in your own body. So you might find that like one arm is weaker than the other and you might find that you have shoulder problems, you know, that same arm, you know, in that same arm or something like that. And so that can, of course, you know, imbalance and stuff like that, that can cause a lot of damage down the line. So you want to focus on like doing unilateral movements where it's like, you know, you're working one limb at a time. Um, it, and that does not have to be the basis of your training. That can just be movements that you do like once a week or something like that. Or, you know, just throw in every couple of like training sessions. Like if you don't feel like, let's say, doing squats or, you know, uh, yeah, just squats or whatever. You can just probably do like Bulgarian split squats instead. Or you can just do something like uh, step ups, lunges, whatever, whatever you want to do um, that, you know, feel like, you know, can fit your needs or feel like fit like. You know, just what you want out of that training session. Here I'm doing leg raises. Um, I've probably said this a bunch of times on this channel. Uh, but leg raises, I feel like that's my bread and butter when it comes to just getting like my six pack. I've always done leg raises. And I'm doing like these twisted kind of like uh, windshield wiper leg raises. I don't usually do these, but I just saw them in a video. And I was like, oh, let me let me try this out right here. Also, I cut my hair, by the way. Um, yeah, I cut my hair. And these leg raises, I'd say, are good for, like, your entire core, especially, like, obliques, since you're getting that wiping motion and that twisting motion. Uh, when you train your obliques, kind of, like, having that twisting motion with any movement is going to be good for core and stability. Um, some people, like, will have lower back problems, and they think that's all because, like, they don't, you know, maybe their deadlift isn't heavy enough or something like that. But it can all be kind of traced to having, like, an imbalanced core. So, like, maybe you have a good six-pack but your obliques are like lacking and then now you have like these weird back problems. Here I'm doing calf raises. Uh not much to look at. I mean, calf raises are really simple. You just do them calf raises, you know, you don't have to do them fancy. 
have a weight plate, 25 pounds in between my legs. So not only am I pushing my body weight, but I'm also pushing 25 plus pounds or plus 25 pounds. And I'm doing, I did two sets of these. I didn't record the second set. Um, and I guess you get a chance to look at my dogs. So don't ever say I never did nothing for y'all because um, I'm giving y'all the free content right here. The good free content here, you know. Look at those five toes on just each leg. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, don't freak out, though. Don't freak out. I feel like calves kind of benefit from having higher reps, like anywhere from like 10 to 15 reps. I believe I did 15 reps in this set. Um, and I, I feel like they benefit like that because it's like we use calves all the time. So they're used to a lot more higher intensity, I guess, work because, you know, we're walking on them, stepping on them running with them blah 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 so i feel like doing it like heavy like how you might do squats or bench press it might not be the same or as effective here um here i'm doing my leg raises so just to kind of go over the entire workout very simple exercises um very limited amount of exercises definitely not as much as i did in my upper body day and the reason for that is because legs are simple you know um unless you want like all the growth out of your legs and to do all the stuff then you sure you can add in like leg curls, uh, leg raises, uh, all these other things. But if you just like, you know, want to get in, get out because leg, you know, let's be honest, leg days is like the most painful one. If you want to just get in, get out, do simple exercises and then do your abs and core. Your abs and core are important and they're often skipped. Peace out.